Hello everyone, this is Robert Weissman, President of Public Citizen. With Congress having finished its work on health care reform, all attention is now turning to financial regulatory reform. This is going to be the top tier issue for Congress, the media, and for us, the public citizen, in the weeks and months ahead. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what we expect to see unfold, how we're going to try to intervene, and what we can all do together to make sure that the financial reform bill that emerges from Congress actually reigns in Wall Street and ensures we don't have another financial crisis. We know what the strategy of Wall Street is going to be. It's to try to confuse people, explain that it's too technical, too complicated, no one can understand it. All the while, they send up their 1,000-plus lobbyists to exert their power on Capitol Hill. Our job is to explain these things clearly and to make sure that everybody around the country weighs in with their senators for the reforms we really need. At Public Citizen, we think there are five key things that we have to either protect in the existing bill or have added. The first thing is we have to have a strong and independent consumer financial protection agency. There is a reasonably good version of such an agency that came out of the House bill. There is a reasonably good version in the current Senate bill, but it has a big problem. It's housed at the Federal Reserve, the agency that was perhaps more hostile than any other over the last decade to consumer protection. We have to get this agency out of the Federal Reserve, make sure it's not subject to veto from other agencies, and that it's got the strength, autonomy, and authority it needs to protect consumers. The second thing we have to do, and this is maybe the thing the banks least want to see happen, is break up the big banks. The biggest banks and investment banks are now actually bigger than they were before the financial crisis. This makes the whole financial system much more unstable, much more vulnerable, and it gives these giant institutions far too much political power in Washington. It's because they are so big that it's so hard to do the right thing. We've got to shrink those institutions down to some reasonable size. Senator Sherrod Brown will be introducing an amendment to mandate that the biggest banks be cut down to size. We also have to make sure that the banks be banks. What do I mean by that? Well, over the last decade, the banks have turned into exotic trading houses. They're speculating on Wall Street. They're borrowing lots of money, making big, wild, speculative bets on the stock market or the bond market. We have to make sure that they don't engage in what's called proprietary trading. They should do the business of banks, not the business of hedge funds and wild speculation. Senator Merkley is going to introduce an amendment to make sure that that would be the law of the land. The third thing we have to do is clamp down on out of control executive and top trader pay. It's unbelievable that the Wall Street firms pay their top people billions and billions of dollars in bonus payments in 2009, the same year they were rescued by trillions of dollars of public support. We have to tax that bonus pay, impose a windfall bonus tax to collect that money back for the taxpayer. Even more importantly, we need to install new rules that make sure there's no incentive for traders and executives to take short-term risks that imperil the long-term health of their institutions. The fourth thing we have to do is end the casino economy. We need to impose a financial speculations tax, a small 0.25% tax on every trade that raise $100 billion and slow down the churning on Wall Street. And we have to impose meaningful rules to control trading and derivatives, those exotic financial instruments that brought us Enron and then AIG and cost taxpayers $180 billion. In the existing draft of the Senate bill, some derivatives are required to be traded out in the open, but lots of others can still be traded behind closed doors. The most minimum thing we have to do is make sure that all of these instruments are traded in transparent exchanges, like the stock exchange um, for stocks. And last, the fifth thing we have to do is make sure that we don't have any kind of global deregulation. We have to make sure that the new rules we put in place aren't undermined by global trading and investment rules. There's a worrisome provision in the existing Senate bill that would subordinate state insurance rules to international global trade rules. Our global trade watch team is working very hard to make sure that doesn't end up in the final bill, and you'll be hearing a lot about that from us in the coming weeks ahead. So to recap, here are five top priorities. First, make sure we have a strong consumer financial protection agency. Second, break up the biggest banks. Third, clamp down on Wall Street's out-of-control pay. Fourth, end the casino economy by imposing a financial speculations tax and making sure we have meaningful control over the trade and derivatives. And finally, no global deregulation. In the coming weeks, we're going to feed you information about what's going on on Capitol Hill. We're going to tell you the most important strategic times to act to support particular amendments and oppose others, and how to get the best and strongest bill through the Senate and ultimately through the Congress and to President Obama. 
Wall Street has already spent more than a million dollars lobbying each member of Congress. We can't possibly match their money and insider influence, but altogether, we can overcome their power if we all work together, if we all work strategically. Together, we do have the power to win rules, to shrink down Wall Street, reduce their power, and make sure we don't have a repeat of the financial crisis.